hey, nice to see you. Uh, you look dazzling today. Maybe I'm saying that because that's our word for the day, dazzling. And it's the word because we are going up the mountain with Jesus. This is the story of the transfiguration that I'm going to read, and then we're going to talk about what it means to see a dazzling Jesus in our life. We're going to talk about what it means to be dazzling, to be transfigured, to be bright and light, lightness of being. Let's read the text. Chapter 9, verse 1 through 13. And Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see that the kingdom of God has come with power. So that's floating around in their minds, and then we pick up chapter 9, verse 2. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus, and Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. They did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then the cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. And suddenly they looked around and they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what this rising from the dead could mean. Then they asked him, Why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? Jesus said to them, Elijah is indeed coming first to restore all things. How then is it written about the Son of Man that he is to go through many sufferings and be treated with contempt? But I tell you that Elijah has come. And they did to him whatever they pleased, as it is written about him. You can't even imagine uh, going up on a mountain, having a cloud descend, having two figures show up that are, are clear to you for whatever reason, that one is Moses and one is Elijah. Not knowing what to do, decided to build some huts so they can stay warm and have a place to stay. Peter is nothing if not a doer, and that's okay. That's part of what makes him dazzling, right? He's just an action guy. We see that. He pulls out his knife and he strikes off the, the ear of the high priest's servant in the Gospel of John, right? He's throwing his net into the water. Uh, here at the beginning of the Gospel of Mark, he jumps into the water to go see Jesus at the end of the Gospel of John, he is there at the fire. He's, he's just in the middle of it, right? He's always right there. And he's a man of action, and sometimes his actions aren't quite on mark. Sometimes my actions aren't quite on mark. Maybe you're the same way. Here's the point. We all have something that makes us dazzling. Something that calls out, uh, something that's noticeable. With Peter, it's a certain action-oriented guy. Now, what is it for you that makes you bright and light, showing the lightness of Jesus Christ in the world? Here's the other interesting thing about this text. Well, there's a lot interesting about it. But this idea, we hear God's voice again. Do you remember the last time we heard it? The beginning of Mark during the baptism. This is my son. The voice comes from heaven. Right, let's just go right back. Right, when you hear these reflections, go back and look at them. The baptism of Jesus, right? You are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. Chapter 1, verse 11. And then here it says, This is my son, the beloved, again. But this time, God says something different. Listen to him. Some pretty good advice. Listen to him. And so. They do. They come down from the mountain. 
Jesus says, don't tell anybody. And for once they don't, right? Or, or maybe everybody else does, but the disciples don't anyway. They choose not to, but they're wondering what this means. And then they get into a conversation about John the Baptist, because Elijah uh, is, uh, John the Baptist is a reflection of Elijah out there in the wilderness, making it straight away. He is uh, the prototype Elijah. And, and he is, well, killed. People showed contempt towards him. Herod cut off his head. So my invitation for you today is just to think about how you're dazzling. What's it feel like to be dazzling? Notice a moment when you're dazzling. And then give thanks to God for that dazzle. Look for the dazzle in others. Call it out. Say, hey, what you dazzled today? See what they say. Anyway, I'm glad to be with you. Thanks for spending this time with me. Peace upon your souls.